Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! While I was boxing up the A12 to send it back to the kind viewer who had shipped that to me to do the testing and modifications on and thought this was a good time to do a wrap up on the A12 and compare the listening experience and the ownership experience of the A50 versus the A12. And this is all assuming that we're talking about both amps with skunky mods done to them. Both of the amps have serious design flaws out of the box. And if you're not a DIYer and you're not going to go inside and do these modifications and change the way the circuits are wired, I can't recommend buying either one of the amps. Their high distortion have nowhere near the rate of power output. Either one of them struggles to make 2 watts. And even with really efficient speakers, if you only need a 1 watt amp, there are better sounding amps out there. And there's no reason to spend 500, much less $1,000 to get 2 watts of power. And so, this is again assuming we're talking about both of them modified. So let's talk about the A50 first. On the plus side, direct heated triode. 300B tubes can sound amazing. The 300B tubes the amp comes with don't sound amazing. And so, you need to replace the 300B tubes. You need to replace the rectifier, and you need to replace both of the driver tubes. The 6S and 7 China things they come with are terrible. I mean, they're just, they're horrible. So let's go over what we're going to spend doing that. You're going to spend probably a minimum of $100 getting a pair of good 6S and 7 tubes. And let's say you want to go with some... New old stock, not real fan of a lot of these new released ones. And so, say we want to get some Sylvania, not even Holy Grail tubes, probably going to spend 150 bucks. 5AR4, got to replace the rectifier tube, that's another 40, 45 bucks. And that's the, these prices aren't including shipping, I'm just talking about the parts. Here's the real problem 300B tubes. They are expensive. I mean, I, you're not going to get out for under $200 for even a decent pair of 300B tubes. And luckily, right now, they still have some of those Treasure 300B-Z tubes that really do sound good. But those tubes were $500 when they were released. And we're just at the tail end of them, and they're kind of doing a blowout sale on them for I think they're $250. And that's still a lot of money for a pair of tubes. So let's figure you're going to spend $300 for a pair of decent 300B tubes. There's $500 worth of tubes that you're going to have to replace after you modify the amp. And so now we're in $1,500 on this amp. So let's go back to the A12. The A12, you're going to replace the rectifier too. The PS Fang 12AX7s it comes with are actually fairly decent. And the EL34s aren't horrible. They're not near as bad as the tubes that come in the A50. But I still would recommend replacing those output tubes. So let's, let's go all in here. We're going to replace the rectifier tube. We've got another $40, $45, bucks, something around there. We're going to buy a couple of JJ EL34Ls, which are fantastic sounding output tubes. They're $15 a piece. So, all in, we're like $75 on tubes versus $500. Or even to be generous, $400. Let's say we get a bargain on some tubes over the A50. It's $400 worth of tubes versus $75 worth of tubes. So... Big win for the A12. The A50 modified 
let's say it's got the 300B-Z tubes in it and got some really nice Sylvania 6SL7s in it. It's got a clean sounding mid-range that's nice and smooth. And that's where direct heated triodes really shine. You listen to a lot of horn music, you would probably hear the difference between the two amps. Not a lot, but you would hear a little bit. The bass is still thin, so you're probably going to have to buy a sub to fill in the bass. There's another $100. And the high end is a lot less brittle and harsh with the tube upgrades. So between the two amps, I would say on the high end, the upper end, they're probably about the same. So A50, a little smoother mid-range, but weaker bass, definitely going to need a sub. And the main culprit for that is the output transformers. I've compared it to a very similarly wired DIY 300B amp that is one of my designs. And it's got much better bass. And the main difference between them is the output transformers. And my DIY has some Ed cores. They're nothing crazy, fancy, exotic output transformers. I mean, those are some budget DIY output transformers, and they destroy the output transformers that come in that 300B amp. Plus, the 300B output transformers are a little lower impedance than I would like to see in a 300B amp, and it keeps the distortion a little higher than I would like to see. It's 3.2K, and the ones in my DIY are 5K. And when you look at the distortion tests, that A50 never really has great distortion numbers. I mean, the mods help a ton, but it still has more distortion than the A12 does. So switch back to the A12 amp. It's got a nice solid base. I compared it to my 6SQ7 EL34 amp, and they sound very similar. So I feel like that the output transformers in the A12 are a better match to the EL34 tubes that are in it, and it really does have nice bass. The mid-range is clean. It's not as sweet sounding as the 300B, but it's not bad. I mean, there's nothing I would complain about. And comparing that to my 6SQ7, which is using the smaller 15-watt Ed cores, which are really sold as guitar amp transformers, but they seem to work really well, it's really kind of a wash. I think the 6SQ7 tube over the 12x7 has a little better mid-range smoothness and that's kind of what I'm hearing but I'm not going to deny that I easily could be biased that that other amp is one that I designed and DIY built and so I'm putting that disclaimer out there that they may be more similar than I want to admit. So anyway the bottom line is Got a $500 amp versus a $1,000 amp at buy-in. You need approximately $100 to $150 worth of parts to get the A12 really singing. You need $600 worth of parts to get the A50 singing. So then you got a $650 amp versus a $1,600 amp. And honestly, I think the A12 still sounds better. Overall, with without putting a sub into the mix, the A12 is going to be a better sounding amp. I know people are going to hate hearing that, that own an A50 and they're all proud of these big tubes and, and whatever. Puts out very similar power levels. It might have a watt or so advantage on the top end. But especially if you have efficient speakers, 
that don't need more than three to four watts of power, the A12 is going to be the amp that you want to listen to. So, again, I wanted to do kind of a follow-up. I've done a lot of work on both those amps. I've listened to them a lot. I will say both of the amps respond well to replacing the coupling caps. And I know that's a touchy subject. There's controversial. There's people that think that, you know, it's a bunch of snake oil. But I really feel like the Mundorf aluminum oil caps, they're $15. They're not, we're not talking about a ton of money. And I really do feel like that they're a step up from those who knows where they were made, orange drop looking coupling caps that come in these China amps. The other thing I tried on the A12 was a solid state rectifier. And while it did drop the power transformer temperature about 10 degrees, I don't think it ever really got hot enough where I was concerned about it. I mean, I think as hot as it ever got for me playing for a long time was about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And this would drop it down to 100. And it bumps up the B plus a little bit. So I feel like the loss of the slow startup that you get with the indirectly heated rectifier tube, it's not worth going to this and trying to drop the temperature in the power transformer just a little bit. And again, you guys need to check your specific amp and check the voltage on the B-plus rail with it plugged into your wall outlet and adjust things accordingly because yours may have a lower B-plus than I ended up with and you need one of these. Or it might be higher and you need to use a bucking transformer and check the heater voltages and everything because these China amps, they are bad about just tossing whatever parts they have sitting around in them. And so you need to double check because I've got people that have emailed me on the, both the A50 and the A12 that said, well, when I changed to a 5AR uh, rectifier, it shorted the rectifier tube out and blew the fuse. And then afterwards, when they checked the B-plus voltage, it was like way different than what I was getting. And they needed a bucking transformer and all that, or they were going to blow up rectifier tubes and whatever. So be careful, guys. You need to check this stuff before you're making these mods, which a little outside of you know what I'm trying to do in this video, but just a warning that you can't just like take these parts, drop them in the amp without checking things before and after. And that's why it is kind of a complicated thing for a lot of people to do these mods. And honestly, it's dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, there's hundreds of volts inside those things. And if you, you know, take your you take your thing and or probing in the wrong place or your finger touches something it's not supposed to and you're holding on a thing, it can literally make your heart stop and kill you. So think about all that too and your skill level before you get into this thing and do some reading and research and watch some videos about tube amp safety before you ever go inside one of these things. And I can't stress that strongly enough. I mean, I got the warning at the start of every video, but saying it here again, this is not something you want to mess around with, and it's not like you get a little, ow, shock. This is like, it can kill you. So, anyway, so I guess for the TLDR wrap-up, if I was going to go buy a tube amp and have these to choose from, I would buy the A12 every day of the week. The Rysong A50 just has too many flaws if I really wanted a 300B amp, you're going to be $1,650 into this thing to even get it to sound decent. And you're close to what a much nicer, ready-to-go 300B amp costs. Because you're not there at 1000 bucks that this thing costs. So, I haven't really been shopping the 300B two preamp built market to see what's out there. But I think for two grand you can get something pretty nice. And I would save all my money and buy something else if I really wanted a 300B amp. Or build my budget 300B build. Several people have built it. Guys, it sounds fantastic. And so either build one yourself, save up two grand, 
or get an A12 or get an A10 and rewire the, the driver tube sockets to use 12AX7s. It's not that much of a change from the A12 as long as you get the point-to-point -point wired one and you can save another 100 bucks. And you can get a $400 amp with the mods, you can be 550 all in and have a fantastic sounding little tube amp. So I hope you're enjoying this series of videos that I've done on these made in China amps and the work that I've put into figuring out how to make these things really sing. And if you do have one of these amps and you've done the mods, you really appreciate the work I've done, you can show me a little love at my website on the donation page. That would be super sweet. Or go buy one of these cool t-shirts and you can wear it out. People are like, what skunky designs? And you can go, oh, well, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing to my channel. And we'll see you soon for more Tube Hi-Fi Fun. Have a great day.